Hello, everybody. My name is Ali Oruji. I'm the UCF programming team faculty advisor. Uh, I work with the coaches in, in preparing the students for the various programming competition. The coaches have prepared these slides to share information and everything you need to know about the local contest. Uh, several of the slides are very, very straightforward and don't need explanation. So I'm not going to spend too much time on those. Of course, uh, you have access to the slides and you read them. And if you have questions, uh, you are more than welcome to contact us. For the local contest, we're going to do it in three rounds. Uh, the first Saturday in fall, we do what we call a practice contest. Uh, the objective of this is the, to make sure everybody is familiar is familiar with how this works. Like if this is your first time, this is a good opportunity to learn how this contest works. Uh, the practice line, practice round is uh, online, so you just do it from home. Uh, we do it. Uh, in the afternoon of the first Saturday, because some students take foundation exam that Saturday. In the, they take foundation exam in the morning, so we do the practice round in the afternoon. The second Saturday in fall, we do what we call qualifying round. Uh, this is online as well, so you just do it from home. Uh, the qualifying round, uh, the objective is to select uh, some students to advance to the final round. Uh, for final round, uh, university gives us one lab. So we have to make sure everybody fits in this lab. And uh, that's why we have the qualifying round. Uh, the final round will be in person. It is the third Saturday in fall semester, and it is an entire day event. Uh, so please uh, plan for an entire day for the final round. And final round again will be in person. Now we have uh, three rounds, but you register only one time. You do not register three times. Uh, here is the website for registering. And when you register uh, before a few days before the practice round, and the coaches will uh, email you your login name and your password and the website you need to go to for the competition. Just to share a little bit about UCF programming team, our students have competed the last 40 years and they have done extremely well in this contest. They have actually finished top three in the region every single year and no other university has done that. Uh, the reason we do well, of course, uh, number one is the good students and they are willing to work hard and put the time and effort needed. Uh, but also we are really fortunate to have a great group of uh, coaches, uh, other professors that uh, coach the team and some of the former team members who are not eligible to be on the team anymore, they uh, coach the team. So you are in really uh, good hands. Uh, the practice round and qualifying round is online, so you don't get to see the coaches in person, but final round, you will meet them in person. Uh, we have uh, six coaches, uh, Kyle, Glenn, Aru, Chris, Travis, and Tom. And uh, when you add up the, the contest experience for all these coaches, uh, it adds up to more than 100 years. So they are really expert in this competition. Uh, you are in good hands. And they're going to teach you all the algorithms you need to know and all the uh, contest strategies you need to know. So if you are willing to put the time and effort, uh, you're going to excel. And you're going to be a great problem solver and great programmer. Now, the way this contest works, uh, you get a bunch of problems and you can work on them in any order you want and you get a set amount of time. Uh, different contests that are anywhere from two to five, six hours. Uh, for a final round, we're gonna do the five hour one, but the qualifying round, we are doing it shorter and the practice one, we are doing it shorter than five hours. And in this contest, uh, the person that solves the most wins. So if one person solves eight problems and everybody else solves seven or fewer, uh, eight problem wins. Uh, but in case several students finish the same number of problems, there is a penalty system for tiebreaker. We're gonna explain that in a few slides. 
So what you can do is uh, you write solutions to problems and you test uh, your solutions. Now, when you read a problem statement, if there are ambiguities, uh, you can ask questions and uh, you ask it through the submission system. And let's say a problem deals with numbers, but it doesn't say it is positive or negative or both. Uh, you can ask question through submission system. Uh, for each problem, you will have one file. We explain this uh, later on. And uh, you don't really put any prompt in your program. Don't put a, a please type the next number or things like that. Uh, input is from keyboard and uh, output is uh, to screen. The practice round and final round, I'm sorry, the practice round and qualifying round, they're online. Uh, so you have uh, access to everything that is available online. And for example, Geeks for Geeks, and they have a lot of algorithms and a lot of code. Uh, you are welcome to use those. And also if you've written some programs and you see you can use some of them for your uh, practice round or qualifying round, and uh, you, know, you can use them, you don't have to type them. Final round is in person. You'll be on campus in a lab and the coaches will provide the language reference manual, uh, but you don't really have access to say gigs for gigs. And uh, you can bring your books, you can bring your notes for your program. You can bring hard copy, but not the electronic one for the final round. Now, uh, the contest uh, provides or allows the specific languages. You'll see it in a few slides. You are limited to those languages. You cannot submit solutions in other languages. And uh, you can uh, ask coaches or judges questions and help, but uh, you don't ask uh, your friends uh, for help. This is an individual contest. Uh, again, the uh, practice round and qualifying round, they are online. So you have access to online resources. Uh, now, uh, for the practice round and qualifying round, since it is online, not in person, uh, if you have uh, questions, now if you have questions about problem statement, you ask for clarification using submission system. Uh, you'll see that in a few minutes. Uh, this is if you have system issues or difficulty logging in. Uh, you can uh, email the coaches or you can chat with them through Chrome. And also the coaches are planning to have a Zoom meeting set up so they can like share a screen and then make it easier to communicate. Now the way scoring works, again, the person solving the most wins, uh, but there is penalty point for tiebreaker if several people finish the same number of problems. Uh, the first point about penalty system, you are not penalized for a problem until you finish it. So if you attempt it and you don't finish it, no penalty point. Of course, you do want to finish it because the number one criteria is number of problems solved. When you finish a problem, you get one penalty point for every minute since the beginning of the contest. So if you finish a problem after one hour, you get a 60 penalty point. Uh, let's say you finish the next problem 30 minutes after that. So that is a one and a half hour from beginning of the content. So you get 90 penalty points for the second one. So you have 60 for one, 90 for second. So you have 150 penalty points. Also, if you try a problem several times and get it correct, a, there is a 20 penalty points for each extra submission. Let's say you submit a five times, you submit a problem five times and you get it right. And you have four extra one four extra submission, that's four times 20, 80 penalty points. Uh, the contest allows Java, C, C++, and Python. Uh, in this slide, the coaches are uh, showing you the simplest environment to use, and they encourage and recommend using those environments. Uh, but they are also showing you other environments in case you've used other ones and you feel comfortable with those. Uh, the coaches are also showing you what they're going to use to judge your submissions. A few notes about languages. For C and C++, uh, make sure uh, you put return zero at the end of your main program. Uh, for Java, uh, do not use packages. 
every problem will have uh, one file, but don't use packages. It's not really a large system development. This is a test of problem solving skills. So you don't really need several files for one problem and uh, packages and things like that. So please don't use packages. And for Python, the coaches are gonna use uh, uh, Python 3. Again, you're gonna get a set of problems and you can work on in any order you want. Uh, for our local contest, uh, the coaches put at the top of each problem, it is easy or medium or hard uh, to help students. Uh, but again, you can work on them any order you want. Uh, and you don't have to finish one problem before you start another one. Uh, let's say you work on one and you have an error and you don't see it, uh, you can go to the next one and then come back to the first one later on. Uh, so you do not have you do not have to finish one before starting another. And the uh, problem statements explain what the problem is. It also shows sample input and sample output to help a student understand the problem. Uh, and uh, you need to follow the problem specification, especially with the output. If the output says a capitalized award, then you need to follow that to get the problem correct. Uh, here is a sample problem from last year local. Uh, every problem has a file name at top of the page, like the file name for this problem is odd even. Uh, so you uh, write, you will have a file for your solution for this problem. And let's say you are using C++, so your file would be oddeven.cpp. And let's say there is another problem and the file name is graph and you decide to do that one in Java, would be graph.java. So you have one file per problem. Uh, and uh, for Java, uh, please use lowercase for your class name. It just uh, makes it easier for the judges to judge. So uh, class names are all lowercase. And uh, repeating the main point, a lot of the students forget that you read from keyboard and you output to screen. Uh, again, this contest is a test of problem solving skills. We don't really need any GUI stuff. Uh, plain text output will do. Uh, of course, uh, you wanna test your uh, solutions before you submit. Uh, you will see the submission system in a minute. Uh, the sample input is available uh, uh, electronically. So if a problem, the sample input is too long, you don't have to type it. You can just download it from submission system. And uh, read the problem statement and uh, see what kind of data, what kind of input that allows, and make sure you test your program. Now, the judge data will follow problem specification. So you do not need to put extra if a statement in your program. If the problem statement says the input is number, you don't have to worry about the letters in the input. And uh, the judges, uh, have their own judge data to test your program. Uh, the judge data will follow problem specifications, and that is repeating myself, it's an important point. Uh, during the contest, you don't see the judge data, but the coaches will share the judge data at the end of the contest. And uh, to make it easier for the coaches to judge your submissions, uh, they do redirect your output so they can go up and down on the screen. Uh, this is the submission system. Again, uh, you register for the contest and a few days before contest, the coaches will send you an email with, you, with your login name and password and the website you need to go to. The coaches have developed this system and they have worked on it a few years. It's an extremely good system. Uh, this is the first page uh, of the system. You see different options at the top. Uh, you can uh, view problem statements. You know, the practice run and qualifying run, they're online. So you can uh, uh, look at the problem statements using this system. Uh, of course, if you want hard copies, you can print it at home. Uh, the final round is on campus. So we will make copies for you beside this electronic copy. Uh, there is a, you see the sample data option. So you don't have to type the sample input, you can just download it. When you are comfortable with your solution, you can submit solution, uh, uh, ask clarification. Again, if a problem statement is not explaining something, you use the submission system to ask clarification on that problem. Uh, 
uh, with the system issues, login issues, we showed you how to contact the coaches. Score, you will see on the next slide. And the final round, uh, the coaches provide the language reference manual because you can really access like Geeks for Geeks or a uh, website explaining the language. For the final round, you can bring your books, you can bring your notes. If you have programs, you can bring hard copies of your program, uh, but not electronic version. This is a sample score from our uh, high school contest. You'll see a similar one in a local contest. Uh, it shows uh, who has solved uh, what problem, how long it took them, and how many tries it took them. So it's a very good uh, a piece of information if you want to see which problems are solved the most so you can look at them and work on it. Uh, red means uh, they have attempted it, but they haven't got it correct yet. Uh, light green means that uh, they got it correct. And dark green means this person solved this problem first. Now, the last hour of contest, we freeze their score sheet uh, just to have some excitement for the end of the contest. When you submit the last hour, you get a response back so you know you finished the problem or you need to work on it more. But the score sheet will not show that, so other students would know who has solved what. Again, just to have some excitement for the end of the contest. Now, when you submit, of course, your program needs to compile and needs it to execute, it shouldn't crash. It needs to produce the correct answer and needs to follow the format. I gave you the example of like, if the problem is statement says, capitalize this word, you need to follow that. And of course you need to have all of the output, the complete output. So if the output is supposed to be 10 lines and you have seven lines and those seven lines are correct, but the other three are missing, you are not done yet. When you submit, you get one of these responses from the judges or coaches. Uh, correct means that you are done. Uh, compile time error, you don't usually get this because you compile before you submit. But sometimes a student finish a problem the last minute of the contest and there's no time to compile, they just submit. And there is a good chance there is a parenthesis missing or semicolon missing, so they get compile time error. A runtime error, like division by zero, out of bound array reference. Time limit, uh, for the majority of the problems, a straightforward solution will do. I would say 95% of the problem, straightforward solutions will do. You don't need to make it a fancy or efficient. Uh, but uh, when you go to a higher level of competitions, uh, sometimes they put a few problems that a straightforward solution may take a couple of hours. Uh, the reason we have time limit, uh, sometimes program get into infinite loop and we need to stop it. That's why there is time limit. A wrong answer, you know, if the output is supposed to be 10 and you print five, and that is wrong. Uh, incorrect uh, output format, I gave you the example that if you're supposed to put a word in uppercase and you don't do that, you are not following the format. Now, content strategy, you know, the coaches will work with you for the entire year to teach you different algorithms, different strategies to prepare you for the content. So it's really a one year process and you can really become expert in two minutes or five minutes, but just a few bullets the coaches wanted to share with you. Uh, do the easy problems. Again, all the problems are worth the same. So it doesn't matter if you do the easiest one, which is 10 lines, or the hardest one, which is 500 lines, you get credit for one problem. Again, at the top of the page, the coaches share it is uh, easy or medium or hard to help you, uh, but just uh, do the easy one. And keep it simple. And make sure you look at all the problems. Uh, to see which one you are comfortable with and uh, read the problems carefully. Uh, sometimes uh, if you read the problem too quickly and too fast, you may miss a point that makes a difference to the problem and makes it much harder than it is. So read it carefully uh, and make sure you test your program. Uh, a few more points. Uh, uh, you have your own computer, so obviously you can use debugger, uh, but be careful when you use debugger people tend to lose track of time. Uh, and make sure you take extra time to understand a problem and make sure your approach to the solution will work. If you rush into things, 
you may come up with the wrong approach and spend an hour or two and then realize it is all messed up. And so it really is worth spending extra time and making sure everything is good. And uh, don't be afraid uh, to take a break and uh, spend time away from the terminal. Sometimes when you stare at monitor, you don't see your error. If you look at it on the paper, you see it very easily. And the last point, which is really important, you want to work at your own pace. You are the most productive when you work at your own pace. Don't do faster than you're comfortable with. Now, for the practice round, we use the uh, old problems because the results don't count. There's really no reason for the coaches to spend several weeks to write new problems for practice and coming up with the ideas, writing the problem specification, preparing solutions, preparing data, uh, the results don't count. So we use old problems. And what that means is some students have seen this problem and they've already solved them. So they're gonna finish them very quickly. Again, the objective is practice. And just try to do a few of them and get comfortable. For the qualifying round and the final round, and the coaches that write new problems and new judge data, and nobody has seen them. So it's gonna be a fair contest. And after the final round, uh, the coaches will invite some students uh, uh, for the team. Uh, we usually have a varsity team members and junior varsity team members. Uh, we usually select anywhere from uh, like 25 to 40. Of course, we do multiple of three because for the competition, we go to his team of three. A local contest, of course, you compete as individual. At any rate, we usually have varsity team members and junior varsity team members. But sometimes, you know, we may need more than two groups. We may need three groups. And we do practice to prepare for different competition. Uh, everybody is welcome to our practices. You do not have to be on the team and to come to practices. Everybody is welcome. Uh, wait until we do the final round and we announce who is on the team. If uh, you don't make it to the team, but you like to come to some of the practices to improve your skills, just send us an email after the final round. We will add you to our email list. And anytime we send emails, we are meeting this day and time for practice. You will get those. And anytime you can join us, you are welcome to join us. Uh, team members, of course, they are expected to come to practices to make sure we do well in the competition. All right. Uh, the coaches and I wish everybody good luck. We hope to see you in the tryout. And we look forward to having you on the team and going to uh, different competitions uh, with you. Again, good luck and thank you.